Hey guys, today I have an overloaded comparator signal to decimal display transcoder. So let's take a look at how this works. As you can see, the digits change multiple times. Uh, we can prevent this by adding a memory cell. And now you'll see that each digit only changes once. The device itself is quite small, but only this component over here deals with the logic of converting an overloaded comparator signal into a BCD a signal, which then converts to a signal strength coded decimal. All right, let's take a look at how this works. So first off, I've removed uh, the additional components and have just the part that converts the overloaded comparator signal into a BCD output with the red being the hundreds place, green being tens and blue being ones. So if I give it a signal of 1, 2, 8, I should see 1, 2 and 8. And as you saw, the signal changes multiple times as the signal propagates through that is why I need to add in that yellow circuit over there, uh, which is the memory cell. So the first part is actually producing the overloaded comparator signal. So there are multiple ways of producing it, either through uh, having it in your storage system output, or actually producing it from a binary input, which is what I've done over here. So I have a signal strength of 255 coming up from that barrel. And depending on whether I subtract a signal or not, determines my output. Next is this little component over here, which is to check if I've either increased or decreased my signal strength. So one side checks for a jacobin, and one side checks for an uh, increase, which then feeds into the memory cell, which I'll explain later again. Alright, next part is the individual cells. So each cell checks for a specific value and depending on whether it reaches that value or, or is not will determine whether I subtract that same value or not. So in the first cell, I have a single strength of 200 coming out. But as you can see, I'm not subtracting anything because my input was 128. So to check that, I have the same signal 200 coming in here. And because 128 is smaller than 200, this torch uh, is on, that piston is pushed down, and I cannot subtract anything from it. But over here, where I have a signal strength of 100, 128 is obviously larger than 100. So this comparator turns on, which turns off this torch, which turns off this piston, which puts a block there, which allows the signal of 100 through to subtract off from this comparator. If you do it enough times, you can produce a BCD output. So what you do is I have 200, 100, 80, 40, 20, 10, 8, 4, 2, 1. Next up is taking that BCD output and producing a signal strength coded decimal. So since I only have two cells for uh, the hundreds place, uh, I only need two cells for the hundreds place over here. So this subtracts two and this subtracts one. And obviously your output is inverted because I'm doing subtraction. And then again, I do eight, four, two, one, eight, four, two, one. So I have three uh, inverted decimal outputs. Over here, I have the memory cell. So when a change is detected, uh, update pulse is sent into this line. So when this line is turned on, it updates the memory cell. So as your signal is propagated through your overloaded comparator to BCD output, and then after that converting it into a decimal output, uh, everything changes, but it will ignore it until the signal comes through. And obviously the hundreds place updates first, tens place objects updates next, and the ones place updates after that. And then what I do is I take the signal which is inverted, uh, the signal strength is inverted, and then I subtract it again from a comparator 
Tibius produce my final signal strength. This device can actually be produced without pistons, though I would not recommend it for it's much more complicated and difficult to build. So the reason for this is that instead of either subtracting 200 or nothing, I instead subtract 215 or 15. The reason for this is that there is no way to cut off a, a higher signal strength uh, than 15 without the use of pistons unless you override a comparator. To override said comparator, what you just you do is have a signal strength of 15 on top of block in which the comparator reads from. To do this, I have the same readout. So this is your main comparator line. I read out a signal, I invert that signal, and then I produce a, a signal strength of 15 on top of the block. This means that throughout the entire device, even though none of the inputs are on, I'm subtracting a total of 150. Uh, to account for this, uh, it's more complicated because each value uh, over there, which is 200, 180, 40, I have to add 15. Uh, but not just that. Uh, the cutoff is also much uh, more different. So this cutoff needs to account for the difference of all the additions, the sums of the 15. So what you need to do is that over here, I have signal strength 16. So the cutoff is 16. Over here, I have a signal strength of 17. But now the cutoff is 32. The reason why is because I have to account for the addition of a 15 subtraction plus the 17, which produces 32. I will include in an Excel document to show what the values for this device should be, though again, I would not recommend you using this. Overloaded comparators are not a very well-known feature. Uh, but to achieve it in purely survival vanilla Minecraft, what you can do is find a villager with a curse train, so it can, either can be a curse of binding or curse of vanishing. Go to a uh, grindstone and put both of those books inside, and you can combine them into a stack where normally you cannot. If you do this multiple times, what you can do next is you can actually coalesce the stacks into one. Obviously, it's a little bit finicky at times. And with all of that, you can produce a stack of 64. Using the stacked curse books, you can actually produce signal strengths higher uh, than 15. So this is just a showcase. So obviously, a redstone block is a signal strength of 15. And over here, I'm subtracting by 15. So it is expected that you get no output. However, over here, because I have multiple uh, uh, enchanted books, larger than should normally be allowed in a single barrel with 27 slots, I have 29, I can actually produce a single strength of 16. So 16 minus 15 is one. However, with extremely large values, basically a barrel full of unstackable items, a stack of unstackable items in each slot, I can produce a signal strength of 897. However, when moving it into dust, it loses all its value and uh, goes back to 15. However, this 897 is maintained if you feed it into a block or through multiple comparators or through a comparator subtraction. The reason for this build is that we have a project on the Melantec server in which we want to have a decimal readout on the fill level of the bulk storage coming out from one of our farms. The only other way that I know of of producing a decimal output uh, is either through a counter or through complicated uh, comparator additions and subtractions, uh, which I was dissatisfied by due to desync and just being large overall. 
Uh, so I was racking my brain trying to come up with a solution, and I realized that uh, you could probably just expand a normal uh, signal strength to binary converter uh, to include uh, overloaded comparators, though the only disadvantage is that you can't use dust. Uh, so I hope that for technical servers, uh, you can consider my device uh, when hooking up to your own storage. Anyway guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to be notified. And last but not least, stay zen. Bye.